Hi guys. All right, today we are going to discuss about S7 1500 PLC. Okay, I going to discuss about the uh, PLC 1500 model and Siemens products. Okay, and that is what I have here now. This one is the CPU and the um, Look at this. This is CPU and this is a digital input and digital output module. Okay, that is a IO card. All right. Now, let me walk you through the connection process of this particular CPU uh, PLC. Here now, I have my power pack. I will energize this uh, power pack with 230 volts input. Then after rectification, <clears throat> I will have output of 24 volts. Then I'm going to energize 24 volts to my CPU, the PLC CPU. Look at here. I have IL plus, I have IM, I have 2L plus, and 2M plus. My IL plus is my positive termination signal. My IM is my negative termination signal. That is where I put my supply input to my PLC CPU. Then I will take output, <coughs> sorry, 2L plus is my positive going out. Then 2M is my negative coming out too. So both of them, they are coming to my IO module. <coughs> All right. Take a look at the termination of the IO module. This particular uh, series of uh, PLC, this one has two compartment uh, I.O. module. Two compartment. One of the compartment started from here and end from here, end here. And this one contain, <coughs> sorry, my digital input here is 8 bit. 8 bit from I0.0 .0 to I0.7. That is one set of the input module. Then this other side is my output card. Okay, I have input this way. I have output this other way. But this one form a set of the input module, input card, the I/O card. This one form one set. Then this other side form another set. So now, for you to utilize the complete set of the module, you have to input the power to two places this one set between here and here you have to energize it with negative here and positive here negative here and positive here negative here and positive here to take care of this set then the second set being this compartment you have to also do that again input negative here and put a positive here then at the revised side, the opposite side, you put negative this side. IM is negative terminal. You terminate here with IM here is negative terminal. Then 2L plus here is positive terminal. This is how you terminate the module. The module. Then this other side, line 1, 1L plus is the positive terminal. Then 1M here, is negative terminal. <coughs> All right. This is how you send your connection to the I/O module. All right. Now the connection process is this: from I0.0 .0 down to I0.7 is all where you terminate your input bit. Your input bit will come here. Then continue from I0.0, from I1.0 to I1.7, okay? I1.7 is also your input bit. So in total, I have 16 input bit, and I also have 16 output bit. 
Okay, so in this place, I have 16 by 16. That is the total KSR. 16 output and 16 input. That is what I have here. Okay, for this particular PRC CPU. Now, like I said, this side is where you energize, you terminate your input. Then this other side is where you terminate your output. Now, I have to um, put up a little logic here to be able to simulate my CPU and my PRC. So if I don't put up a logic and download the logic to the PRC in this particular software, I won't be able to simulate this. So that is why you see I put up a little logic here to be able to simulate this output here. Okay, for the <coughs> termination process of your output, I have my Q0.0 as my output one. Then Q0.1, Q0.2, Q0.3. So I have four output here to energize these contactors. All right. Okay. Their operation sequence is such that motor number one will come up first. After a few seconds, motor number two will come up. After a few seconds, motor number three will come up. The same way number four. The reason for this is because um, I don't want a power consumption of the four motors to be the impact to now come to my supply. So I want the motor to be energized sequentially one after the other. Okay. So that <laughs> the impact of the starting current will not be disturbing other current using equipment in the facility. So that is the reason why I designed this one to simulate so that you know how to also design a logic to control induction motor sequentially one after the other. Okay. All right. Now, this other side is my start push button and this is my stop push button. If you understand logic operation, you know that start button is always normally open. NO button. It's a spring loaded momentary push button. And the stop button in physical there is the um <coughs> sorry the hardware the hardware switch on default setting no is green nc is red then composition of this switch here is open and here internal is closed all right then for my io module i also have indicators this place will now change to indicator green light the whole of this area you see this hole is all indicator lamp, indicator pilot, and indicator light indicating the status of this particular module. If this output is giving out signal to my fuel device, here will illuminate green light to show you that this particular terminal, this particular bit is activated. Any of the bit that is being activated will show green light. Okay, but once you power this, let's do that. Let's power now. Okay, so that you see the indicator. This one is to notify you that this compartment is being energized through this other linkage here, through this linkage. Once you power here, this one will indicate that this module, this particular module card is being energized. Then this one is telling you that this compartment is being energized. This I, have, I told you that we have two compartments. Here is one compartment and this other one is another compartment. So you energize them accordingly. Okay, look at them. This one to illuminate, telling you that this compartment is ready for activation. Okay, this one is also telling you that this compartment is ready for activation for the next action from your logic. Then this one is illuminating, telling you that the entire card, the entire module is being energized, is set up for use. Then this one is also illuminating, telling you that it's a power on the CPU. This one is to indicate fault. Red indicator signify fault. Yellow indicator signify fault. All right. Okay. Now, let me walk you through how to uh, get your CPU written. Well, it's quite unfortunate that this particular software does not have the rating of this particular CPU. 
you know this is just a simulating a uh, simulation software it's not a Siemens software it's a difference this software is especially designed for control okay for control so we use it for control we also use it for uh, automation training so when we are training you and they want to see physical structure of your devices the connection of your component we use this software so that you will be able to see your input bid and your output bid you see their physical representation then when you understand the logic principles of devices switches contactors relays and sensors and see their physical structure when i take you to automation software that's a software set aside for automation training we call it a um, siemens teleporter hmm? we have siemens teleporter we have step seven we have a lot of them we have ali brandy we have a lot of software designed specially for automation training okay and for summation automation and um, software uh, activities but this particular one is customized for control design and also for um, automation training all right so um i wanted to show you the rating of this but unfortunately i can't see you can't see it visually to see the rating other information we need to get but just listen to my voice let me explain to you how um let's simulate first let's simulate before we discuss about further about this let me put on this logic let me put on this output remember that this contactor is terminated to this q 0.0 .0. then this other one is also terminated to let me show you clearly just hold on look at their cable this particular one is terminated this one is terminated here yeah? this one is here so that is where i terminated four of them to get one of these bits each of them so if this one is energized you will see pilot lamp indicating here telling you that there is a signal leaving the io card okay all right so that is the um status of this uh, um, io module now um let's simulate then later we'll discuss about the cpu rating so i want to put on this load this is my output like i said before this logic we also illustrate the operation sequence so once i energize the system this one is going to come up first after a few seconds this one will come up any of them that's come active you see how the contactor is going to be closing here we show red when it closes here we show red when it closes here we indicate red so let's do that i press this button sorry um Just hold on. All right. Um, let's see if we can simulate now. All right. This one is on now. After a few seconds, this one will come up. This one is on now. After a few seconds, this one will come up. This one is on now. So watch the logic. The way they come up is the same way the logic respond. All of them will come up this way. Okay. Then four of them, one, two, three, four. The four motors are running now. So in that case, we come to the output. Look at the output indicating how the signal is leaving to the field instruments, to the field devices. These are what we refer to as field devices. Okay. It can be um referred to as motor is going to power a motor or is going to power any equipment okay all right so here is the output leaving to go to a different location of your industry to put on equipment all right and some of them too will be enclosed together with the plc what i mean is this some design requires plc and the device in question to be right enclosed inside the panel the contactors will be enclosed together with the PRC. Okay, so only a mod cable is what you use to take power from here and go to where your equipment is situated. Okay, but some cases too, this particular uh, contactor is going to be enclosed in a different panel, in a different uh, switchboard. Then only a signal relay. So in that case, if you're going to be enclosed in a different, um, a considerable distance from where the CP, uh, PLC panel is located, in that case, it may likely interface this with a relay. 
if you watch some of my exercise, I show you and I teach you how to interface contactor with a relay. So this signal coming from here is going to energize a relay and relay finally energize this uh, output, these contactors, okay? All right, so that is what I mean. Then let's discuss about the CPU PLC rating, how to understand the rating. Let me show that. Now, supposing I have this contactor to be a kind, uh, let me say 200 amps. Each of this contactor is 150 amps or 120, let me say 200 amps each. Okay. One, two, three, four, two, two hundred amps each is what I have here. Now, the power rating, the power consumption, the power demand of this particular CPU, including the I.O., the power rating is going to be put together and they now use them to rate the CPU. Okay, sometimes the CPU will be rated to be two amps, some will be 1.5 amps. That is the current consumption of the CPU. All right. So in that case, you're supposed to understand the rating of your CPU before you now get your power pack. So if your PLC demand 2 amps, 2 amps is rated current of the CPU, including your I.O. modules. In that case, you are going to double your power pack, your power supply. If the consumption of this, the power rating of your CPU and your PLC I.O. module, is rated to be 1.5 amps or 2 amps. So in that case, your power supply output power rating is going to be 4 to 5 amps. Just give room for um, other exigencies and uh, for future reference. Okay. All right. So um, I have one of the exercises where I discuss the mode of operation of CPU and the PLC. And the, and the I.O. card. It does not use physical connection to operate. It's just flashing of bit. Like here now, it's momentary switch. That instruction we take PLC, we take this PLC that I need output here. So no, there is no connection between here. There is no cable directly connecting from here to this place. And there is no contact to bridge them on a permanent connection going to be on a flash bit instruction that is why the current current capacity of this place is not even significant you know the load capacity of this place can be 500 amps meanwhile the system that is communicating to the load is like two amps okay so the method of communication between plc and the few devices and your output is a very wonderful method is by flashing instructions okay all right so that is what i have for you today then um once again let me refer you to this particular logic let me show you one thing again let's see this particular logic i have another logic this way for control for control schematic diagram if you understand what I just explained, the mode of operation here, let me also refer you to a control diagram that you must design and understand before coming to write a program. Let me repeat again. Before coming to automation software to write a program such as this to control operation sequence, you must understand this logic. Let me show you this one. Yes, you must understand this. That is what I recommend. If you understand the operation sequence of this particular schematic, what I have here is exactly what I have the other page I showed you, the other C, uh, PLC um, I, I just illustrated to you now. Exactly what I have here. Let me simulate so that you understand what I mean. I put on this power. I want these motors to come up one after the other in a sequential method. I put on the system, this one is running. Look at the power on. Few seconds, this one come up. Few seconds there about, this one come up final. So the same method, if you understand the operation sequence 
of this. You now use TLC to write the program, to write the ladder logic and download it to PLC. PLC will start doing the same logic operation. All right? This particular portion is my logic, uh, logic, um, sorry, my lashing logic here. Yeah. Here is my lashing logic. The same way, let me show you lashing logic in my ladder diagram. This is my lashing logic. This network is my lashing network here. Upon energizing this network, the instruction will commence. The function will commence. So here must get energized first. Now giving instruction to the rest of the network. The same way the logic of schematic stipulate that you must first of all energize this logic. This is the lashing logic. Once here is getting energized, that is when the whole of this instruction will take place to activate the respective contact of a contactor and a relay, timer relays. Okay. All right, now this is the information I have for you today. Remember that this is my first failure, please. First failure. This is just direct online, but if you understand sequence operation and the method of operating direct online, it's very simple to make other logic compatible with that direct online. The whole of this, they are all direct online method. And this logic is the direct online we refer to here only. The rest of this one is articulated, it's just um, associated logic that we use to complete the function of this into, in order to get this uh, logic complete set of operation. Okay, all right, so uh, share and like for more, then also register the course so that we teach you how to do electrical design, electrical control, and also teach you the control system and the, before you now go to automation. Automation is our end result. The channel is for automation channel, but we must build you and ground you and give you a platform that you use to navigate automation space. You cannot write a program. You cannot navigate. Let me show you something, please. Let me show you this. If you don't understand control logic, you will find it difficult to digest and understand this, this operation sequence here. But if you understand the sequence operation of control, understand the logic operations, understand the lashing circuit, understand contact movement, understand timer and relay functions and their configuration, you can go very far and understand automation programs. No type of program that you cannot understand. Both complex and middle complex and basic, you understand them. Sometimes you may be given a schematic to convert to a ladder logic. If you understand this logic, if you understand this schematic, you can convert it now to ladder and now download to PSC and use PSC to control the same operation. It's as simple as that. Okay? All right. So, like and share, and also register the course. Very few uh, of my followers like my page. You just watch and leave. If you watch and leave, I have segmented courses, like this particular one I just narrated to you. I have other two or three put aside that I will upload. If you don't like, you don't comment, and you don't share, Facebook will not share the subsequent one to you. It will now be to those people that like and comment, then they will now send to them. Because Facebook has a unique method of sending information to people. It can only be you that like or share or commented. That is when Facebook now see you and find out that this information is of a great importance to you. You now send the information across to you. But if you watch the video, you don't share, you don't like, you don't comment, subsequent ones will not come to you. So that is the idea. So like it and share it and also comment. All right, that is the way you encourage us 
to bring more updates okay all right thank you